DVD reviews. Spader Timber just keeps on rolling on. Last week we had the new kids showing one of Spader's fucking first major roles, playing the bad guy. Well, now we're going to fucking flip the script on the new kids, and we're going to be reviewing a movie where he plays his first heroic lead. Tough turf. This time it's Spader's turn to play the new kid at a fucking school full of assholes and shit. Spader plays fucking badass rebel without a cause, Morgan Hiller. The story is his family moved from Connecticut. His fucking father had a big real estate brokerage firm or something that fucking went under. So they moved to Los Angeles. Why Los Angeles from the Connecticut? I don't know. They never really explained that, but they did. Here they are. They used to be kind of rich. Now they're like kind of borderline poor. So Spader has to go to a fucking public high school in LA full of assholes and gang members. The movie starts out a little gang on the streets. They get this hot chick, Kim Richards. Fucking, you might know her. She was a child actress that was fucking in, like, Disney movies. She was in the original Assault on Prince 13. She was a little girl who got killed. Now, unfortunately, she's, like, on the real housewives of fucking Beverly Hills and shit. She's, like, I don't know, fucking all going all insane and shit because she's middle aged. But in this movie, she was still hot. She was still young. Basically, she plays the bait for this gang scam. She gets fucking businessmen to go after her in a fucking alleyway. Next thing you know, the gang comes out, robs the motherfuckers. Well, this is the opening scene of the movie. Next thing you know, before this motherfucker can get robbed, guy comes by on a 10-speed bike, fucking shakes up a beer can, sprays in all these motherfuckers' face, the fucking businessman gets away. These fuckers chase after him. They fucking, I don't know what, like a car antenna shit, they fucking whip at him. They fucking cut to the back of his jacket open and shit. Cut to the next day at school, these gang motherfuckers are there. All of a sudden, here comes the guy on the 10-speed bike who fucked up with him last night. And it turns out, of course, it's James Spader. This movie, almost to a T, is a remake of Bro Without a Cause, but that ain't a bad thing. This is kind of like the 85 version. Now, while nobody can fucking step in the shoes of James Dean, Spader does a real good job of being the 1985 equivalent. So the gang, they want to get revenge. They take fucking Spader's bike. They pull it out in the street. They're riding on it. After school, he walks out, hey, man, that's my fucking bike. Give it to me and shit. So they give him the bike back. Next thing you know, fucking one of the members of the gang comes flying down the street in a car. Fucking Spader's standing there, like it's kind of like a game with a chicken, he's just standing there with his bike, this car's coming at him, and he's such a bad motherfucker, he don't move. The fucking car swerves, doesn't run him over, but unfortunately catches his bike, that fucking destroys his 10 speed bike and shit. Next thing you know, Spader's gotta go home and fucking explain to his parents why his bike's all fucked up, and they go, oh, here we go again, man, we've had to move so many times, you caused so many fucking problems, James Spader, you're the fucking black sheep of the family. So textbook, Rebel Without a Cause, but it fucking works. Robert Downey Jr. is in this movie. He's kind of like a cool, kind of new wavy, punky kid with spiky hair and shit. He actually wants to be friends with James Spader because he sees that he has balls and shit, so he invites him to a concert. Fucking the band that fucking Robert Downey Jr. plays drums for actually turns out to be the Jim Carroll band. They have a good extended cameo. Fucking Jim Carroll even gets a couple lines in the movie. They play like two full length fucking Jim Carroll band songs. That's the thing that's cool about this movie. It really puts a lot of emphasis on music for a, a New World Pictures cheaply like little B movie. This thing has some good visuals, some good music. It was done with a lot of care. Kind of has the early MTV music video vibe. It's done really well. It ain't like your usual early 80s grainy cheap ass B movie. So there's actually a big kind of like a group dance number at this thing. Spader, he's going after Kim Richards. He thinks she's hot and shit. He don't even give a fuck that, you know, her boyfriend is the leader of the gang and shit. So you kind of get that thing. And she's like a real bitch at first. I really don't understand why he's going after, but hey, whatever. Basically, this is like the second strike, the last straw. The gang is pissed off, man. They fucking start fucking with James Spader. They fucking steal his Porsche, which actually isn't his Porsche. He stole it fucking first. So they're all joyride out and shit, and the cops fucking pull him over. And that's the thing that's funny is the gang motherfuckers get so pissed off at James Spader because they stole his car, but the fact that he stole the car and got them in trouble, they blame him. Come on, motherfucker. A car thief is a car thief. Come on. So while the gang motherfuckers are in jail for a few days, this going to buy James Spader some time to put the moves on Kim Richards. He finally breaks the ice with her. She quits being such a cold bitch. Fucking, he introduced some cool shit to her. You know, he gives her some books to read. They fucking go to a country club, sneak in, eat a bunch of lobster and shit. He sings a song for her on the piano. He starts winning her over. Like, basically, she's like a fucking hood rat. And she never met anybody who was, A, actually interesting, and B, actually treat her good, which Shane Spader does, because he's fucking studly lead and shit. But then that's where the dilemma starts coming into place. Fucking Spader, he won't back down. He won't stay away from the girl, the gang. They're so, like, especially the leader guy. He's such a fucking asshole. And the fucking this guy, I think there's like Paul Monies or some shit. I've never heard of him before, and I've only seen him in this movie, but he's fucking great, man. Like, he ain't just like a typical snarling villain and shit. Like, you really believe that he's obsessed with this girl and he won't let her go at all costs. So basically, it's just like a collision course. Downey Jr. is a fucking a sidekick trying to help Spader out whenever he can. 
but it's really Spader's fucking fight. The movie comes to an end when the gang tries to play a prank and it goes wrong on Spader's father, who's actually a cab driver. They accidentally, well, not even accidentally, they just shoot him because they try to jump him and an old man kicks their ass so they get pissed off and shoot him. So now shit comes really down to nitty gritty, comes serious. So what happens? Your father shot up in the hospital over some fucking hood rat chick and her fucking nasty fucking boyfriend. What are you going to do? What's going to happen now? Well, of course, James Spader, he ends up fucking Kim Richards. And he fucks Kim Richards fucking titty double because, you know, there's a tit shot during the sex scene, but it's obviously not Kim Richards. She wouldn't do it or whatever. But still, it's, you know, it's a good sex scene. At least they got the fucking in there, you know, just being a proper 80s movie and all. So now that the fucking's over with, it's time for the big showdown. Spader lures these motherfuckers into a warehouse. It's almost like a fucking rip off of Gotcha. He's got like some paintball guns, but instead of paintballs, they have like little darts in them. And he really only uses them like on one guy, shoots him with some little darts and shit, get him to drop a pipe or whatever. But you know, hey, this is still kind of cool that they come up with the gimmicks and shit. So Spader fights all the motherfuckers one by one. He gets some fucking shit to fall from the ceiling, fucks him up. Big showdown between Spader and the fucking bad guy. I won't ruin it. It's pretty fucking cool. So Tough Turf being a mid-80s, Rebel Without a Cause type of movie. Spader just being a perfect fucking lead for this fucking thing and the gang being so badass and shit. It really is enjoyable. They really put an emphasis on music, cool editing. The movie was shot real nice as a movie because it was so much fucking fun to watch. I want to give Tough Turf 9 out of 10. Alright, picture and sound is being DVD. The picture quality is actually pretty good. Nice anamorphic transfer. Not a whole lot of fucked up, you know, compression marks, mosquito noise, or any like real damage to the print that they use. It looks pretty fucking nice for this age and how low budget of a movie it was. The sound, unfortunately, is 2.0 stereo. That's how they made the movie and shit, and the company wasn't going to fucking, you know, do a remaster. So, you know, for stereo, it actually doesn't sound bad. The songs sound really good and punchy and bright. I'm going to have to give the picture and sound 6.5 out of 10. Special features, old obscure movie, you know, maybe they can't get the director. I'm sure James Spader didn't want to talk about this whole bullshit, so they couldn't pull out too many special features. They only had a theatrical trailer. This being an early Anchor Bay release, they put like a little booklet inside back in the day when DVDs came with booklets. It's kind of got the front cover, and then it's got like a little montage of pictures from the thing, and then the chapter selections. It's kind of neat for a collector, these photos and shit, the little montage they did. So special features only getting a the theatrical trailer in that little booklet. Sorry, I can only give it one and a half out of ten. The real interesting thing about this early duo of Spader movies is Tough Turf and the New Kids actually came out a week apart in fucking January 1985. Tough Turf came out, next week fucking New Kids came out. Tough Turf opened up 400 screens, did pretty well, made over 9 million, so it really launched his fucking career. New Kids only came out in 100 theaters, so it wasn't like real big hit or anything. But I think these two movies back to back show people Spader's range, show he could be a tough motherfucker, show he could be a bad motherfucker, show he could be the leading man, show him he could be a villain. And I really think these two movies is what propelled him into all those Brat Pack movies playing the villain and shit like Pretty in Pink and Lesson Zero and shit. So we got two more weeks of Spader Timber coming up. Don't go anywhere, all you fucking James Spader fans out there. Hillbilly D reviews have got what you fucking need.